everyone. In our last lesson, we saw how we can import tiled backgrounds by simply clicking on adding a new object and selecting a tile sprite. And we actually saw that a tile sprite can actually be dragged without, you know, squishing or, you know, squashing our images in the up and X and Y directions. In this lesson, we're going to look at layers and Z order sorting. And we're also going to see how we can select objects in the scene. So there are two ways we can select an object. If we go over here and click on this, we're just going to be selecting the object properties, but we're not selecting the instance. Once we've dragged an object in the scene, we have the instance. So how do I select the player? Well, there's one crude way of doing this. We can click on the first layer, click on the next one, and then we can click on the player, right? So that's one crude way of doing it, but that's not the best way of doing this. Another way to do this is to go over here in the instance list and then clicking on the name of that object. This will select the object and then we can apply motion to that object. But the problem is if the object is hidden behind other objects, even though we select the instance and try moving it, we're going to be selecting the object that's at the top. Top is the keyword we're going to take home from here. We need to find a way of placing the player at the top when we've created this. And to do that, we need to add a few layers. So next, I'm going to create a UI layer, a player layer, a and a background layer as well. Layers work from bottom to top. Think about layers like having a piece of paper. When you place a piece of paper on a table, that layer becomes the background layer because it's the bottommost layer. Each paper you place on top begins to increment and hides that layer at the bottom. What we did here, we dragged our player as our first instance, so it became the object that was at the bottom. Next, we dragged in our midground and background, which was above our player, and now we cannot see our player, even though our player is visible in the scene. So let's go ahead and create a background layer. So I'll hide this instance list, and I'll just drag this so we can see this clearly, and let's click on add a layer. And I'll just call this BG for short. Next, I'll add a layer on top of it. And I'll call this the player. Next, I'll add another layer. And I'll call this the UI layer, which we're going to be using to create our user interface. So now that I have that background layer created, what I'm going to do is to open up my instance list again and click on this background. And what I'll do is set this to the background layer. And let's click on the midground and set this midground to the background layer as well. Let's click on our player layer and let's set our player layer to the player layer. Now, what happens is we can actually see our player in our scene. And when we click on our player, we can drag and select our player and move our player around. So this means our player is stacked on top. Our background layer is at the bottom. We can always sort our layer by clicking on this equal sign. And if I drag this layer underneath, we can't see the player again because it's below the background layer. And we can just drag this and put this back up so we can actually see that. So that's one way you can actually stack your layers in case you want to have things sorted in that position. Just click on this equal sign and just hold and shift that. Now we have our PG up or we can just drag this and place it anywhere we want. Now, here's another thing. There's something called the Z order and the Z order on a layer is going to specify which of your items on that same layer are stacked in front of each other. So for instance, if we go back to, uh, let's select our background and let's set this object here. Let's set our mid ground and let's set the Z order to uh, zero. And let's set our midground and set it, give it a Z order of one. So what happens is zero is going to be at the bottom of the background layer, and one, our midground is going to be on top of that background layer. To mess this up, let's go. I see. Let's go ahead and see what happens. So I have the background here on Z order zero, which means it's at the bottom. Let's set the background Z order to two. Now this puts it in front of our layers like so. We can still select our player, which is still a layer above, but on our background layer, we're sorting things wrongly. This is supposed to be what comes first, which is this guy right here. This is going to be 
our object at the zero layer. Basically, this is going to be our piece of paper that we drop on the table. And next, we want to drop this in front of it, but we've not set that Z order properly. So to fix this, let's set this guy, which is our first. Let's set this to a Z order of zero so that it sits at the back. And we can just click and drag this over here and now set everything where we need them to be. So just drag this guy, place it over here, and then let's drag our mid-crown and place it over here. So now we can easily select our player and we can add more and more of these uh, layers together. We're going to have a layer for tile maps, which is we're going to be using to create our level. And we're going to have layers for the UI like we've created. We're going to have layers for coins as well, just to keep things organized. The good thing about layers is that you can hide them. For instance, I can hide the background layer. I can also hide the UI layer. What I can also do again is to lock a layer. So for instance, we can lock an instance. I can just lock my player instance such that I cannot select it anymore, even though it's at the top. Once I've locked that player layer instance, I can't select this. So I'll just unlock that so I can set my player over here. So please, uh, this is a very key, crucial and important section in this course because we're going to be designing, we're going to be designing our level and with our level, what we're going to do is to kind of like work with layers. So it can, it's going to be super nice and unique. And we're going to see how we can create our levels using tile maps. So uh, see you guys in the next lesson.